Hi, I'm Michael Yardney, and today I'd like to talk to you about a new era for our property markets. You see, our residential property markets have actually moved on to a new era. We've moved on from boom conditions to a phase of slower growth. This cycle started in May last year. It was flamed by the first homeowners grant, which then spurred on existing homeowners to upgrade their homes, and finally investors re-entered the market. But the market has now slowed. And I guess that's happened because of the triple whammy of multiple rises in interest rates, increasing unaffordability, and falling consumer confidence. Over the last few months, home buyers, and to a lesser extent property investors, seem to have moved to the sidelines. Finance approvals have dropped, auction clearances are declining, and in some areas, prices have fallen slightly, haven't they? Yes, we've moved into the next phase of the property cycle. Before I explain what this means to you as a property investor, I'd like to show you two new DVD programs that I'm really very proud of. The first one is um, Building Wealth Through Property Investment, and that next one is about the millionaire mindset. Now, whether you're a beginning investor or a seasoned pro, and especially if you missed my recent seminars, you must watch these as I guide you step by step through my approach to real estate investing. You can get details at the bookstore at Property Update, and there's going to be some links at the bottom of this video. Okay, back to the new era in property investment. The last year or so was like all other cycles I've lived through, I've invested through. Greed and fear got out of balance. And properties in some suburbs increased in value by well over 20% a year. You see, many Australians stopped thinking of their home primarily as a shelter, and as a long-term investment, and they'd begun to think of their houses either as, I don't know, a get-rich-quick scheme or a very large ATM. This was spurred on by rising property values and all the hype in the media. But this has all changed now, and the days of double-digit property growth, they're gone for a while. Lately, I've been hearing from property investors who are a little bit concerned about what lies ahead for property. But I try to reassure them that the property market is behaving normally. This is not the end of this property cycle, it's a mid-cycle slowdown, as some fundamentals realign. Now that doesn't mean growth in values has stopped. It means that the markets in our major cities are going to be growing more slowly. Some areas are going to drop, of course, and at the same time, rents are going to be starting to rise. One of the changes that's happening in our cities as they're maturing is that they're becoming more unaffordable. In every state, we've got multiple property markets, with some properties increasing in value while others are falling in value. There's an ever-increasing divide between the haves and the have-nots. And quite simply, the rich are getting richer. Properties in the lower socioeconomic areas, and many of the outer suburbs, and especially those new outer suburbs that are being built now, they're tending not to perform anywhere near as well as properties closer to the CBD, and in some cases, properties closer to the water. So you see, families in these more affluent areas are not going to suffer from the same way as families in the new areas. See, the new areas, families are suffering from rising interest rates as they take up a larger portion of their disposable income. Of course, our markets have always moved in cycles. They've moved in cycles of rapid upward growth followed by periods of flat or sometimes even negative growth, you know, that means falling prices, followed by another upward movement. I've often suggested that as soon as an investor has traded through a cycle or two, the better the investors they'll be. They'll understand that the slower phases of the property cycle, such as that which we're experiencing now, are normal. And then they'll know how to take advantage of this. You see, shrewd investors, whether they invest in the stock market, in properties and shares, whatever, they share an important strategy they know that the best time to buy is not when the market's hot, when buyers are out in droves competing for properties that are snapped up at an alarmingly increasing prices. Rather, they wait and buy when the market slows down. Experienced investors know that the market is cyclical. They know that no matter how frantic the market may be, sooner or later, it's going to slow down and they're going to be able to buy at their leisure. In a boom markets, Buyers often find themselves losing out to another buyer who's driven by fear and greed. The fear of missing out on that property boom and the greed of wanting to own one or more properties. Now, of course, they're both very human emotions. Now, when there are fewer 
buyers and competition is reduced, there's time not only to do your thorough research, but also to compare, negotiate and drive a harder bargain. Over the last few months, I've spent a lot of time researching our property markets, the economic markets and the financial markets. And I've done this to protect my own and my, my and Pam's own port, property portfolio, and also to help our private clients, and also to educate you as readers of my Property Update e-magazine. And I've spoken to as many experts as I could. Now, not, not theorists, but experienced authorities, and I've poured over large amounts of research data and compared my conclusions with my inner circle network of property friends. And I've come to some very interesting conclusions. Firstly, this property cycle will eventually end. But this isn't the end. This isn't it. There are some great opportunities out there, and the markets are going to reward those who know how to take advantage of them. This cycle is probably going to come to an end, not a crash, but it's going to slow down in a few years' time. Look, it could probably be about 2013, but there are so many unknowns between now and then. And it'll slow down because interest rates are going to keep pushing up our booming, they're going to keep rising because of our booming economy. But between now and then, we're going to see a few good years and property values are going to continue to rise, but more slowly than before. But if you sit on your hands worrying about and waiting for a crash, you're going to miss out on some great investment opportunities right now. Number two, the property investment strategies used by the vast majority of property investors over the last few years, they're just not going to work in the next few years. Now, I'm not talking about positive cash flow, because in my opinion, that never worked well anyway. The third conclusion I came to is we're in a new era of the property investing. I've recently seen or spoken with a number of investors who are hurting by the credit crunch. You know, rising interest rates and changing bank lending criteria. Some have had to sell their investment properties, others are worried they may have to in the future. See, clearly their investment strategy didn't work for them. The fourth conclusion I came to is that rising interest rates are going to, well, sorry, interest rates are going to keep rising, and inflation is going to be here to stay, at least for a while. And the fifth conclusion is that our economy is going to perform strongly over the next few years, driven in part by the resources boom. And our property markets are going to be underwritten by this strong economy rising consumer confidence, the huge deficiency of housing at the time of increasing demand and rising cost of construction. What this means is that to be a successful property investor and to take advantage of the opportunities this changing market is going to present over the next few years, it's very likely you're going to need a different approach to the one you've taken over the previous few years. Some of our viewers today are definitely going to need to do different things to protect their current property portfolio. Now, I've outlined the approach I'm taking in this new two, hour, two DVD program, Building Wealth Through Property Investment. Here I'm going to actually outline, I have outlined my views on where the economy is heading. And I've done that with the student of economy, Rolf Schaefer, where we outline what I'm saying and the reasons behind why we think what's going to happen so you can understand our research. And I also outline my property strategies that are going to work well in the next few years. For close to four hours, I explain my successful property investment approach. If you want to be prepared for this new era of property, just uh, click on the link below and find out more about the DVD program. Plus you get three free bonus reports and audios that come with it. And the other one, uh, developing the millionaire mindset is just as important. If you missed my recent round of seminars, you really must get this program. So click down below for more details. Of course, over the next weeks, I'm going to keep you updated every fortnight on how to take advantage of the changing markets through my Property Update e-magazine. Now, because there's so much happening in the property markets nowadays, I'm also going to keep you updated almost every day with a short post in my blog. Just click the Michael's blog uh, link at the top of our Property Update page here, and I suggest you subscribe to it. Now, this is a very different subscription to the regular newsletter, just giving me my, sh my short daily blogs. For property advice you can trust, please go along and see that team at Metropole Property Strategists today, and I look forward to bringing you my next update in two weeks' time.